Okay, I'm going to cover some points in direct therapy. We have two ways for outflow. Either the conventional outflow through the trabecular meshwork, this covers 90%, or the UV sclerer outflow, it covers 10%, and some sources say it's up to 50% may get through the UV sclerer. So this is the first point. If you are going to choose drugs for tr treatment of glaucoma, you need to know the site of action of the drugs. So beta blockers, alpha adrenergic agents, topical carbonic anhydrase or systemic carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, they all decrease the outflow, the production of echoes. On the other hand, for the increase of the outflow, we have myotics, and epinephrine, the old drug, was used to increase the conventional outflow. And prostaglandins and alpha adrenergic agents, they increase the uveoscleral outflow. The idea, if you are going to use two drugs, you shouldn't use the same group. It's, it's, not, it's nonsense to use, say, beta blocker and alpha adrenergic. It's better to use, say, beta blocker and prostaglandin. So it's whenever you are combining drugs, choose drugs that work at different locations. This is the first point. For this here, if you are going to give beta blocker, alpha adrenergic, topical carbonic anhydrase, all working on the same location, this is a bad choice. It's better to go for prostaglandin combination with some of these. For the beta blockers, The peak effect is after two hours of installation of the drug. The point is, after using the drug for one year, after 12 months of use, there will be decrease of the response to the drug. So it's better to stop the beta blockers for one month than reuse it every year. We call this a holidays break. So this is the main point when you are continuing with the beta blocker. We should stop it for one month every year to get rid of the adaptation or what we call the long-term drift of the effect, losing the effect of the drug with the prolonged use. Then we need to know that we have two types of beta blockers. We have selective beta blockers that does not affect the lungs. This is betaxilol or betoptic eye drops. If you have a patient with uh, chronic obstructive air do, uh, airway disease or brain asthma, you can go for that. And you should avoid the regular beta blockers which uh, get side effects on the heart, chest, and brain. The selective does not affect the chest. Now we come to the adrenergic agents. We have selective group, that's alpha-2 selective adrenergic stimulus. They work at by lowering the aqueous production and increasing the outflow. Be careful, it can cause fatigue and sleepness, especially in children. Also, it has effect on blood pressure causing hypertension. The point is, it's totally contraindicated below the age of one year. If you use it before the age of one year in the first year of life, the child may die. So this is the point to remember. Never to use selective alpha-2 agonist in the first year of life. It can cause fatal hypertension, can cause CNS depression. Never below the age of one year, it may cause death. Don't use in young children in general because it will cause hypertension. Now the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, it's available systemic form or local. This is the group of side effects that may happen with the systemic or with the local. The systemic, except for a short period.
the systemic is contraindicated in cases of kidney dysfunction, liver dysfunction, or hypercholeric acidosis. Now we come to the topical carbonic anhydrase. In Egypt, we have these two main drugs, trosopt and azopt. As a monotherapy, it can be used three times a day. But when combined with other drugs, it is every 12 hours. It's twice a day. Yes, this is an image of a microchip. انت ما هدلتش معايا الستات لامب اوريها لك حاضر فكرني بس بعد ما اخلص الجزء ده مايوتكس كان بي يوزد ان كيس اوف اكيوت اتاك اوف جلوكوما بات بي كيرفول مايوتكس ار يوزليس اف ذا انترا اوكلا بريشر هاير ذان 40 سو اف ذا اي بريشر از هاير ذان 40 اند يو ار بوتينج مايوتكس ذس از يوزليس So better to lower the, the IOP by, say, manitol or glycerin or something. Then you when it's below 40, you can use the uh, myotics, the pilocarpine. The second point, pilocarpine should be used in the acute attack. One drop, 15 minutes, a second drop, and that's all. Then you can go, say, for eight hours or six hours. If you continue putting pilocarpine very frequent, you're going to get a reversed effect. There will be a congestion in the ciliary body. Whenever the ciliary body is congested, it will be anteriorly rotated, and the acute chamber will be shallow. So pilocarpine in the acute attack, you just put it once, 15 minutes, put it a second time, and that's all. Okay. Again, pilocarpine can be used in pseudo-exfoliation it minimizes the iris movement, so the, the rubbing of the iris on the surface of the lens and exfoliation of the lens matter is prohibited. And also, it can be used when there is no crystalline lenses, if you have a fake or pseudo fake glaucoma. So this is now the main role of pilocarpine in acute attacks, and also in open angle, if pseudo fake or a fake, and in pseudo exfoliation. Now we come to the prostaglandins. The prostaglandins lower the pressure by 25 to 35%. Same to the combined uh, beta blockers and topical carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. These are the most potent drugs, either prostaglandin or the combination of beta blocker, topical carbonic anhydrase. Prostaglandins may cause redness but with the prolonged use of the drug, the degree of redness may decrease or disappear. So you have to warn your patient that the drugs may induce redness. Don't be afraid. Continue to use it. A second point to test or to check the efficacy of the drug. In cases of beta blockers, topical carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, you go after two weeks and see the drug efficacy. Here in the prostaglandin group, you can wait up to six weeks to see, to get the final result if this is drug effective or not, and the degree of efficacy of the drug. And if you have a problem with one of the prostaglandins, you can use another prostaglandin. There is a variation of the response between the different brands of the prostaglandins. So to judge the efficacy, we need to wait for six weeks. Prostaglandins, if the patient needs a cataract surgery, we should avoid it for six months after the surgery. Prostaglandin itself, it's an, one of the mediators for on the available when there is iritis. If a patient has an iritis, prostaglandins are liberated, and this um, forming the process of different reaction in cases of iritis. So if I'm using it by myself as a drops to control the glaucoma, there will be a risk after cataract surgery that there will be uveitis induced by my drug. And also, when there is no lens, I'm putting an interocular lens, we have a risk that it may cause cystoid macular edema. So it's better to be avoided 
classically six months, but some other sources say we can just stop it for six weeks, then we can go for it after cataract surgery. So this is again in postural gland inside effects, which always for uveitis, stop it before IO intraocular surgery or laser therapy and recommend it to stop it for six months or at least six weeks. And be careful with this steroid macular edema, especially in affections. Lee? With affecia, maybe the excess from the anterior part back to the macula. Again, it was recorded in prostaglandins use may induce dendritic-like lesion. So sometimes if you have a patient using it and develop a dendritic-like lesion, it's not a herpes, it is the side effect of the drug. Mm -hmm. uh, at least I will go, I will stop it at least for two weeks. So the lowering effect, if you go for prostaglandins, is 25 to 35%. El-brimodine, lower alpha agonist, alpha stimulus, alpha 2 stimulus is 25%. El-beta blockers is 20, 25%. The weakest, the lower el, um, topical carbonic anhydrase inhibitor is 15%. All these statistics in the average was on patients with glaucoma and they get a mean IOP of 27. And you get these drops, this percentage of drop. So these studies were done on a patients, on a group of patients with a mean IOP of 27 and they start to evaluate the lowering effect of the drug. A <coughs> washout uh, period. This is if you want to stop a drug and see uh, how much it was effective or if you are doing a research and you want to get the previous treatment effect out, then start a new treatment. So this is the washout period for the drugs. Beta blockers is two to five days. Topical carbonic anhydrase inhibitors is one week. Simpatum myometics two weeks. Prostaglandins four to six weeks. Clinically, this is the best way to use drugs. Start by using it in one eye, then wait two weeks, six weeks, depending on the type of drug you are using, then recheck the pressure. Now you can compare with the eye with the drugs and the eye not using the drug, then you know how much the drug is effective for this particular patient. We can add or replace depending on if my drug is effective, according to the European Glaucoma Society guidelines, if the lowering effect is 15% of the pressure, the drug is effective. Then you keep it, and if you don't reach the target IOP, you can add another drug. But if the IOP reduction is less than 15%, you need to replace it, change it with some other drug. When switching, wait for the washout period before judging the efficacy of the drug and keep in mind these effects of the drug. This is the lowering effect of the different brands we have for treatment of glaucoma. Combined drugs, say we get two drugs here or combine prostaglandins with other drugs, get a main advantage. When you put two drugs in one bottle, you are lowering the amount of preservative the eye is subjected to. Preservatives has a bad effect on the lacrimal system, the lacrimal secretion, and they induce fibrosis. So if you use a drug-free preparations, like we have now prostaglandin P without preservative, or 
reduce the amount of preservative by using combination. This is the main advantage of a combination. And the second is the um, adherence or the compliance, the adherence or compliance. It's easier to remember to apply a drug when the drug is used less frequent. If a drug is used up to two times per day, the patient can remember. But if you are going to use something three times or four times, the patient cannot remember. The adherence to the treatment will be less. So it's better to use uh, less frequent, and also it's better to use less number of drugs. And instead of applying two drugs, the patient might forget if you can using the two drugs in one bottle, then the adherence is better. So which drug to use if you have a, a patient with primary open angle glaucoma? Again, age of patient. We should avoid alpha-GAN in young children below the age of one year. It's totally contraindicated. And in general, we should avoid it in children because of hypertension. And below one year, it may cause death. I remember one of the ladies get a baby was using alpha again and she noticed that the patient is or the baby is drowsy sleeping all the time now depending on the type of glaucoma in cases of normal tension glaucoma it is better to avoid non-selective beta blockers as they may affect the circulation so we can go for prostaglandins or topical carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. OK. Now, these are the European Glaucoma Society guidelines we can use with start with one drug and see I just I want you to remember this insufficient lowering of the IOP if the IOP reduction is less than 15% then you need to switch stop this drug and go for another drug Points to consider when using drugs, the efficacy of the drug. You can get it by checking the drug in one eye first to see, and the compliance, and the checking of the pressure that the drug is controlling the pressure over the 24 hours. There is no fluctuation. It should be of a reasonable cost with a reasonable side effects. <coughs> 